Hi there team. My name is Cameron Conaway and welcome to Constructive Feedback at Work, a complete course on the basics. In this course, we will cover the fundamentals of feedback with a heavy focus on building the practical foundation you need to effectively give, receive, ask for, process, and use feedback. While this is a course on the basics, I don't want you to be fooled by the term basics. This course applies to everybody, everywhere, assuming you are human, and like all humans, are surrounded by feedback. Feedback is both an art and science, and I found that it's a skill worth continuously developing regardless of where you are in your career. Consider this piece in Harvard Business Review, which opens with this story. I felt like I was going to throw up, Philip confessed to me during our coaching session. Giving feedback is something a leader should be able to do every day without breaking a sweat, he said. But for me, it feels like the end of the world. And check out how the article summary definitively states, a lack of constructive feedback is detrimental to your team, depriving them of mentorship and growth opportunities. And workplaces marked by poor communication and unclear expectations are breeding grounds for low trust and disengagement. Or check out this research published in Fortune magazine, the result of a two-year study which found, among many other insights, the following three. Number one, employees who don't get clear feedback quit. Number two, not all feedback is equally effective. And number three, high-quality feedback isn't distributed equally. And if these examples weren't enough, academic research spanning decades paints a similar picture. The work of Professor John Hattie comes to mind. Hattie spent 15 years researching what variables most impact achievement in learners. In summarizing the results, feedback researchers David Carlos and David Bood put it plainly, the most powerful single influence on achievement is feedback. And while the examples I just shared are more at the individual level, the vital role of feedback at the larger organizational level rarely gets much fanfare. For example, did you know that feedback played a huge role in how Stuart Butterfield, co-founder of Slack, grew that company to $1 billion in two years? As the writer at Fast Company put it, if there's one theme that emerges when founder Stuart Butterfield talks about Slack's success, it's that the company made customer feedback the epicenter of its efforts. All of these are reasons why I'm so passionate about feedback and why throughout our time together here, I hope you'll also develop a passion for it. It's had a tremendous impact on my life. It's how I've improved in almost everything I've ever done. Uh, from when I was a young boy in Altoona, Pennsylvania, learning how to shovel snow so I could make some money. The feedback there was mostly self-feedback, feedback from my body, letting me know that if I was shoveling wet and heavy snow, I couldn't last long if I used my back to try to lift it. And feedback plays a vital role in my career today where it helps me improve the experience I provide for my master's degree students at the University of San Francisco and in the results I achieve at the Fortune 100 company where I have the immense privilege of being a team leader. Before we dive in, this is a two hour course or so. So why on earth should you spend your time with me? Well, first, you shouldn't unless you're finding value in the content. But if you need some credentials up front, I've written about feedback for Harvard Business Review, uh, was one of a few industry leaders asked by Harvard Business School to create content for a global course about feedback, and my non-linear career path from grocery store worker to mixed martial arts fighter to investigative journalist and now uh, as a professor and a team leader at a company named The Best Place to Work three years in a row has meant I've seen feedback from various angles and that I bring a multidisciplinary and evidence-based perspective to this topic. You'll find plenty of uh, academic studies throughout this course to back it all up. If anything I've shared so far sounds even remotely interesting to you, stick around because here's what we'll cover. Okay, so this course on constructive feedback will start with some of the basics. And these are basics that very often get ignored. So we'll spend a good bit of time on them because they actually serve as building blocks for what we'll cover deeper into the course. So as you see here, we'll kick it off by discussing what is feedback. Again, this might seem obvious to you, but part of why giving and receiving constructive feedback at work is so challenging is because many of us tend to make assumptions about what feedback is, including the assumption that we all think about it in the same way. So we'll put a feedback definition on the table and explore its various parts to make sure we're all on the same page. If at any point in this course you become a feedback nerd like me, I've got a 30 minute deep dive video titled, What is Feedback? 
that covers the definition and dozens of related terms from just about every angle imaginable. For this course, we will only stay at the surface level definition because that's all we need to launch into gaining a practical understanding of constructive feedback and how we can get better at giving and receiving it. From there, we'll get into why is feedback important? This also may seem obvious to you, especially after those examples I shared earlier, but it's worth spending time here because you're about to make a serious commitment of your time. And if you're anything like me, it's a million times easier to stay committed if you really believe in the importance of what you're committing to. And in the last part of the introduction, we'll explore from various perspectives why feedback can be so challenging. I found that it's helpful to learn about some of the challenges early uh, in the course because as our feedback literacy develops, and don't worry, we will cover that term in great detail uh, later in the course, we can begin to see how our new insights can be uh, immediately applied in addressing some of the most common challenges we have. And with that, we'll jump right into each module, starting with receiving feedback. Uh, when it comes to constructive feedback, most of what you'll find in articles, academic papers, even books, is a kind of radical prioritizing of providing tips and other information for the giver. In fact, many of these resources often center the feedback giver so much that it's clear that the feedback receiver is sort of an afterthought, a role that is mostly relegated to smiling, saying thank you, and otherwise just nodding along to sort of appease the giver. If you've sensed that vibe out there, welcome to this course where we recognize and center the power the feedback receiver has in the feedback relationship. So yes, we will begin with receiving feedback because if I've learned anything about constructive feedback over the years, it's that in learning how to effectively receive, we also dramatically improve our ability to be better givers. From there, we'll cover the nuances of processing feedback. What I mean by processing is, what next steps do we take after we receive feedback? For many of us, our default after receiving feedback is to begin using it. But as I wrote about here, there's often some important work we should do between the time we receive feedback and then use it that ultimately allows us to make better decisions and ensure we are leveraging feedback in ways that benefit our personal and professional goals. Once we know how to receive and process feedback, we're in a great position to decide if we want to use the feedback. As with processing, there's some nuances to making sure we use feedback effectively, so we'll cover those in module three. And this leads us to module four, giving feedback. Now that we will be equipped with the most essential skills in receiving, processing, and using, we're in a perfect position to learn how to effectively give feedback. In this module on giving feedback, as with the others, I'll share not only some practical tips, but the underlying why, as in why are these tips practical in the first place? Again, our goal here in this course is not to have a cheap cheat sheet that we turn to rather robotically. It's to develop a deep understanding of constructive feedback so we can make thoughtful, intentional decisions in our everyday interactions with our colleagues. From there, we'll dive into one of my favorite topics, how to ask for feedback and why we should all do it. The academic literature refers to this as feedback-seeking behavior. And because it's vital for all of our growth and because understanding all of the previous modules can help us do it better, I've put this one after the module on giving feedback. And last but not least, we'll learn how to build a healthy and effective feedback culture by taking the foundation we've built throughout the course and learning how to practically apply it for the betterment of our teams and the groups around us. There's no shortage of content out there about building a feedback culture, but the vast majority of it suffers from a few pitfalls. Number one, it makes the classic assumption that everybody knows what feedback is and has the requisite skills they need. And number two, it tends to assume that only the team or department leader plays an important role in building such a culture. As you may have guessed, I believe all members of the culture uh, can and should play a role. So in this module, we'll explore what those roles are and how we can all collectively level up our feedback abilities so that we're working in the kind of feedback environment uh, that benefits all of us. So as I hope you can see, there's a place for you in this course on constructive feedback. Whether you are primarily here to improve how you give feedback to others or want to catapult your own achievement by learning how to seek and receive and process and use the best feedback possible. As I said earlier, in my experience providing feedback training, learning to give always helps you receive and learning to receive always helps you give. So if you're on this journey as an individual, great, but I'd highly recommend bringing others on your team along for the ride. If you're a people manager, you might think of this course kind of like a book club where you can progress through it collaboratively watching parts of it synchronously or asynchronously, and then coming together to discuss it. 
And one note before we start the introduction, I highly recommend working through this course from start to finish rather than skipping around. Some of the definitions, challenges, and concepts introduced early will kind of build on each other, and you'll be in a better position to make sense of it all if you've uh, started from the beginning. Okay, onward to the introduction.